Well, howdy, howdy, howdy. Nearly senior citizen here. Greetings, boys and girls. And I am a cruel, inhuman, and heartless monster. Or at least I feel like it. In my pocket, I have a little hamster. Oh, oh, don't be scared. This is Dr. Snurf. This is little Dr. Snurf. I don't know why he's so scared, but he's a little cutie. I'm sorry he's making that into the little scared sound. I'm sorry he's so scared. I'm gonna put him back into his cage though because he's so scared. I I don't know why he's so frightened. I mean, he's a prey animal, of course, but he's not acting any more scared than normal. And in fact, he's not acting frightened at all. I wonder why he was so scared at that moment. I feel kind of bad about that. He's, he's a sweetheart. He's a nice little guy. I don't want him to be any more frightened. I gotta make that uh, because I, I hate asymmetry. So there we are looking kind of close. Good enough. <laughs> but I, I don't know why he was so scared. I feel bad about that. But luckily he's not acting frightened at all. So that's a good thing. I mean, even when he was up on my hand, as you saw, he was just walking. He wasn't running or just huddling and not moving. He was just walking like normal. So I'm not quite sure what was going on there. Little Gojira down here is just fine. And over against the wall, my other two. <coughs> oh, excuse me. <coughs> oh, that one caught me by surprise. Little Thigmo and Little Saber, they're fine, they're dandy, they've been up and doing things, but everyone until just before I turned on the webcam was well and truly asleep, but I had looked into his little house, and so that woke him up, and so he came out and was looking around and went, oh, so I reached in and grabbed him and put him in my pocket, but it freaked him out, so now I feel bad. Such is life, though. I have a bunch of phone calls I have to make. I've got to start doing that. I've, I have not been able to make it to therapy for quite some time. And so I don't know if I've been wanting to do like training wheels, see how I do without it on my own. And since things have happened in a way that I haven't been able to go, that's, I really want to so I can make sure I'm staying on track. And the fact that I've been finding it hard to make phone calls again means not as much forward movement as I would like. So I'm, I'm kind of worried about that. But of course, I don't have money to buy gas. So that's going to be exciting. I got to try and figure out. I mean, literally, I don't to have food stamps. I got to find out what happened to my food stamps. I don't have enough money to actually make a full rent payment, so I'm going to go negative, which means I don't have any money to buy food, which I don't have any money to buy gas to go driving anywhere. So I'm not going to be making the 25 mile trip anywhere soon. So yay, it's a good month. But such is life. I mean, it's, I'll survive somehow, even if I'm going to be like having a lot of lost weight by the end of the month. That happens too. Life is life. But last night, of course, I still went walkies. I, did I take the full, I can't remember if I took a, I don't think I took the loop up to the top of Olympic Highway and then to Walmart. I honestly can't remember if I did or not, but I don't think I did. I think it was just a straight shot from my home down into downtown Shelton, because I live in Southern Shelton, and then across, then up through the construction. The sidewalk on the one side has been like all the way poured all of the street lights are in and most of them are working what they're doing now is something i didn't really like i thought they were going to change this so that the road would be like bigger the road is actually where you drive it's smaller now they made the sidewalk bigger and then the actual lanes are smaller and tighter and not only that 
they're going through and putting between the lanes a lot of these concrete dividers that aren't just the dividers, they're like three feet across. So it's like, that's gonna, I don't know how anything with a lot of big wheels could possibly get through. Because if anything goes wrong and something gets caught or wedged, it's just gonna go funk and that, that there's no maneuvering room. You're gonna have to get something up there to pull it out and you're not gonna be able to come in from behind and you might not be able to come in from the front. What's gonna happen? There's, oh my God, it's, I do not think that was a good design decision. It's just going to take one emergency vehicle coming through there, getting caught, and because of something happening, having to maneuver around something, and then bam, smack! The thing is caught. And then somebody's going to die, and they're, they're going to have to tear apart the whole thing again. So I don't know, it, I hope it works out, I hope it's fine. It's just that I don't think it was a good design de decision, oy vey. But past that, past that, walked up to Walmart and had to buy cat food with what little money I have. So if you could, I will survive somehow even if I end up losing more weight, that's fine. But I have cat food on my Amazon wish list. If you could help me feed my animals, that was awesome because I, that was awesome, that would be awesome because that cat food that I bought, that's all that I have. I'm not going to be able to buy any more cat food. If you could help out, that would be awesome. If not for me, if just for my cat and my hamsters. I have hamster food too. That would be awesome. I really hate asking, but thank you very much if you can. And if you can't, again, I never feel obligated, so don't feel, un I never feel entitled. <laughs> so don't feel obligated, please. Even, even if I get my English wrong and I, what I mean is what I actually mean and that's thank you so very much if you do but don't feel obligated if you don't thumbs up for that past that though i'm still just working and doing what i can here with my stuff i fell asleep yesterday and that was really bothersome my heart continued to do a whole bunch of weird things while i was out walking likely because i fell asleep which starves my brain and my heart of oxygen when I stop breathing. So when that happens, my atria especially go really nuts. And, but even though it feels weird, I feel absolutely zero distress. And that's, that's good because I actually it, I'll feel mostly energized during the periods when it is happening. I mean, it doesn't energize me to have my atria misfire or my ventricles to misfire. I say misfire, but it's this rhythm change. But So it's not fun and I don't like it, but it's usually to zero detrimental effect. It's just something that's happening and is unpleasant, but is affecting me externally anyway over the short term, not in a bad way. So that's good. That's good. But I walked all the way to Walmart and then I walked all the way back and then I sat and I played some video games and that was fun. And it really was. Usually I blip between like four or five different games before settling on something because, and I've wanted to talk about this especially, computer screens are bad for sleep. They're really, really bad. They give out the wrong kind of light so you need to have a one of those 
blue light filters that'll filter out the blue light because blue light is something that keeps you awake. That's daylight light. That's not sleepy time light. And your body is used to the natural rhythm of the sun going down, light being filtered, the light quality changes. When that happens, it triggers sleep things. And so when you're getting blue light through your monitors and your phones and your tablets, it really messes with your sleep patterns. And so you wanna have a blue light filter if you can. And also remember, our, our, our brains evolved with what you see is what is real. And it has to make decisions based on what it sees as being real because those creatures that don't die. And so our brains are taught that what we see is what is happening. So when you're playing a game, like a first person game, where you are having to fight for survival against monsters or animals or the tricky environment, your brain has no choice but to treat what it is seeing as low polygon as it may be, if, especially for the older games or sprite based, as real, as a danger. And so yes, when you play a high stress first person type shooter thing, you are flooding your body with fight or flight hormones. And your body is geared up for survival because it has to treat what it sees as real. Because if it starts treating what it sees as not real, you're going to walk in front of a car. You're going to get eaten by a, a, a bear. You're going to fall off a cliff. You're out of the gene pool. Your eyes have to treat. <coughs> Your brain has to treat that as real. And so when you play these games and then try to go to bed, you're going straight from a fight or flight survival to, hey, I'm gonna go to sleep now. You've got a whole bunch of stuff that you need to work out and let your body get rid of before you're even gonna have a chance to sleep. So that is one of the reasons that when I'm trying to do things at night before going to bed, I try not to play the high survival type games. No first person shooters. I try to keep them more abstract and less trigger the fight or flight reflex. Because that, it, your body can't tell. Especially if you're wearing earphones that puts in the sound of the battle right into your ears. Again, your body has no choice but to treat what it is hearing as absolutely 100% real. And when you are hearing danger and you are seeing danger, your body is set to get out of there, get doing something to do something. So if you need to sleep, try not to do that. And as a really quick aside, I have jumped off of methadone entirely. I decided it was too much trouble to try and do every other day pill things because I was forgetting. And so I've just stopped, which I'm quite sure, in fact, I know, doesn't help with my own sleeping right now because Especially methadone, opiates are like the major thing that was knocking out my restless leg syndrome. And with now no opiates at all in my system, I have no first case, first point, major restless leg syndrome stopping agent anymore. Any of the other medications I take for it have always worked in combination with and not just by themselves. So when my body now is stuck with restless leg syndrome, I'm kind of stuck with restless leg syndrome. And that's why the other night it was especially bad because I woke up like an hour after I fell asleep and then it was restless leg syndrome just this, just on this side of it which is why I was able to stay laying in bed. 
but so bad I couldn't sleep. Now last night though, it worked out really well. I went to bed and I slept and it was good. A very, very good thing. I, I need to sleep. I am so far behind in my sleep. That's why I keep falling asleep in here, which is so irritating because I don't want to die of a heart attack. I don't want to die of a stroke. While my blood pressure is okay, it does cumulative damage. And one day there's just going to be the straw, that final straw on the camel's back. And I, I, I don't want it to be a heart attack. When I finally drop out, uh, when the drum beat, the death march drum beat gets too loud and then it suddenly stops, I want there to be a minimum of pain when I go. It's not the actual death and non-existence part that's the horrible part. It's the pain and knowing what's coming that's bad. Life is life. But hey, I've opened up 24 hours worth of comments in my community tab, and I'm going to go through and thank 20 to 25 people for having left me a comment. It is arranged because even though I count American Sign Language on the fingers of this hand with my fibro and depression and more, I'm lucky I can remember that my name is Reginald P. Farquhar. And since it's not Reginald P. Farquhar, I know I'm in a lot of trouble. And now I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm just thanking people for having left me a comment, whether it's a good comment, a bad comment, an indifferent comment. The fact is you left me a comment. I'm not reading the comments right now. I'm going to read them afterward. Thumbs up each one I do. Answer as many as I can. But for right now, I'm just thanking you for having left the comment. If I mispronounce a username, no disrespect is intended. As an American English speaker, we're just not good at that sort of thing. I'm better than most, but that still doesn't say much. So let me call it my Chrome, which is the unfortunate browser I use. And Ice Damon, greatly appreciated. Danny Ziegler, thumbs up and thank you. Hebe GGS, <laughs> it's not a dog collar, it's a choker. Oya Yazid, thank you very, very much. Keynote speaker Garrison wins CSP, another very unpleasant person. J Visuals, greatly appreciated. Jesus Flores, thank you very, very much. And Pandora NYC1, thank you very much, greatly appreciated. Cat, Kathy Kitzkat, sorry about my rental tongue syndrome there. Always good to see you in the comments and here is hoping that your day goes well. I, every time I hear about something bad going on with you, it's, I feel bad. And official Aaron, greatly appreciated. Underscore Maza, underscore, thumbs up and thank you. AZRH, thank you very, very much. Sebastian Ferris, hopefully today. Hopefully today. And here's hoping your life gets better too. Nia Nia, thumbs up and thank you. Twinkie, <laughs> greatly appreciated. Freddie Fazbear, Freddie the Fazbear, greatly appreciated. Pilot Paladin 970, YT, thumbs up and thank you. And Evan Alexander, good to see you in the comments. Thomas S., Greatly appreciated. Vanilla Gorilla, 420, thumbs up. And my name is Hades, oh, son of a gun. Jonas Abdul, greatly appreciated. Evald Schwip, I sure hope I'm close. And Exoria, greatly appreciated. And last but not least, Tall Dude, 123, greatly appreciated. Blech. Pardon my dry lips and dental adhesive. It is greatly appreciated, each and every one of you. You get me out of my head, into the world, dealing with real people and uh, someone who is depressed with social anxieties, who is an introvert. It is very important. Definitely a thumbs up. And of course, the hamster was just too sleepy. Reason number three. How many reasons are there going to be? Uh, maybe just a couple more. If you can check out my various links, I have Twitter, Facebook, GoFundMe, Patreon.com, NearlySeniorStatism.com. If you could donate to my GoFundMe campaign or become a Patreon.com patron like one of these beautiful and awesome people, that would be beautiful and awesome. But if you cannot donate or you simply do not donate, I do take all good wishes and I deposit them in the bank of my heart where I draw interest. So thank you very much. If you could toss me a like, I do appreciate all the positive validation I get from my existence. Definitely a thumbs up. And if you could subscribe to the channel, that would be very cool. Greatly appreciate I would understand if you did not wish to, but of course, if you did, I will do my very best to keep you entertained from now until the literal end of time. Thumbs up and thank you. 
Well, hey, I've got this video coming up. I got another video ready. I just have to edit and render. I'm going to be working on a different video, so that's a good thing. If it stays sunny with no rain, hopefully I'll be able to get the walkies camera out, show you all what's been done up on the road. That would be cool, definitely a good thing. So, hey, you take care. Have a great day today. I will see you on the flip side. And that, my friend, is a very good thing. And I will survive. That is a good thing. I mean, I may lose weight, but I can afford to lose some, maybe.